Hey MCAT crew, this is Mahul from MCAT Mastery and today I'll go over why you shouldn't let your first MCAT practice test score get you down. Any good MCAT test taker knows that the most important part of preparing for the MCAT is writing practice exams and doing practice questions. While content review can get you pretty far, um, what really lets you understand WMC logic and how to sit through such a long grueling exam is writing a full length. And what can happen when we write our first full length is that we get a score back that we didn't want. And that might be because it's really far from our dream score or because it's something that we didn't expect to get based on how we felt while writing the exam. And what you have to remember is not to let this get to you. Don't let your first practice test score define the course of your studying. What you should do once you get the score is try to see why you might have gotten a lower score. And I'm going to go over some of those reasons here. And also, you should see on how you can improve and get better on the next few practice tests you write so that you get the score you want on testing. So when you write your first practice test, it's really important. If you go about to write your test only two weeks or one month into content review, then it's no surprise that you're not going to do as well on the test as you would on your actual MCAT. And that's simply because you don't have the foundational knowledge, the content needed to write the test. And you'll see this when reviewing, you'll be getting like discrete questions wrong or questions in the passage that require outside information wrong. And this is a cue to you that you need to go back and finish your content review before writing another practice test. And let's say your first practice test was a third party practice test from like Kaplan or Next Step. What you have to remember with third party tests is that they purposely def deflate their scores so that the score you get in the end is lower than what you would have gotten had you written a double AMC practice test. And they do this on purpose so you feel compelled to buy their prep products. So you have to remember that the score you get on this, a score you get on a third party practice test is likely lower than the actual score you would have gotten based on your abilities at that time. But even if you do poorly on a double AMC practice test as your first practice test, you have to remember the whole point of practice tests is so that you can improve by the time you write the next one. Your first one will definitely not be as good as the score you'll get on test day. Because if it was, then there'd be no reason for writing more practice tests, right? You could just walk in and write the test that day itself. But if you do poorly on your first test, that should be a motivation for you to see where you went wrong and improve the next time you go and write a test. And this can be through doing thorough review of your full lengths and making sure you understand why you got every question wrong that you did, but also going through and seeing the questions that you felt were confusing or the questions where you didn't know something, going back and reviewing that. And also um, in those questions, not only looking at the confusing answer, but looking at all the answers, not just looking at the answer you got wrong, but the answers that you were confused on or that you definitely knew were right. But why did you know you were right, right? If you go through and just try to have this meta understanding of how you think and how you approach these questions, then you'll be able to modify your study strategy in a way that you'll see real increases in your score over time. And you have to remember that sometimes the reason you did poorly on your test is just because you were having a bad day or you weren't feeling that well or you went into the test with a negative mindset, thinking that you're going to do poorly, feeling that you were unprepared, stuff like that. And this stuff really has a big impact on how well you do on a test. Um, for instance, with my first practice test, I, my score was about 10 points lower than the score that I wanted, at least. Um, and I remember telling myself that it was because I clearly didn't know enough and I wasn't writing the test properly and it was my fault. But only when I started thinking that there was something I could do and it was something my strategy and not just me, over the next few practice tests I took, I really went into reviewing and making sure I understood why I was getting things wrong and not blaming myself for it. And especially when I was writing these practice tests, I would start to go into it with a positive mindset, telling myself, even if I didn't feel prepared, I would tell myself that I can do it. And once I did that, I did improve and I saw my score get better. And that's why I always emphasize 
to go into your test with a positive mindset, feeling you're going to do well. Even if you think that you're not ready, just pretending you're ready is enough to get that score you want. If there is a time to be concerned though, that's when you've been writing a bunch of practice tests and you don't see your score improving or you even see it decreasing. And this can happen with a lot of test takers. So don't feel alone if you're in this situation. The reason this happens most often is because there's a flaw in your study strategy or in your MCAT prep, the way you review your exams. And that's the reason that you don't see those score increases in between exams. And if you're struggling to figure out um, where you're going wrong in your strategy and in your study process, then you can consider um, working with me or another tutor from MCAT Mastery and we'll go through and help you target those specific areas in your study strategy to, sh to get you those score increases that are so vital to getting that dream score you want at the end. And I'll leave a link to that below. Also, I'll leave a link to um, the step-by-step -step strategy materials that MCAT Mastery has created that are full of tips and strategies um, to help you when you get to a hurdle like this where you're not seeing your score improvement and you're trying to stay positive, but uh, I know it can get really taxing. And at this time, it's like I said, it's really good to reevaluate how you're studying and how you're approaching tests and resources like this can be really helpful. Okay, so to end off, I'll just leave you with a final message here. Your first test, like I've said, is not an indicator of how well you'll do on your MCAT and how well you'll be as a doctor. The whole point of these tests is so that you can improve and you should see them just as that, as a study tool that is just one step in your process of MCAT prep and you'll use them as a way to improve your scores and get closer to your goal score at the end. And so I hope that helped you and I want to wish you best of luck in your MCAT prep.